Great. Well, why don't we go ahead and get started then? Um, actually, uh, Tara, would you mind hitting record on your side? Um, and we can uh, we can also make this available later. Uh, if you share it with uh, Taylor Wagoner. Um, I don't think I have the capability to do record on this one. Let me, let That's me see. A, let me see if uh, I do. And um, then I will share it. Unfortunately, I don't. It looks like uh, we can't record this time. So we will fix that for uh, the next one. Okay. Well, um, I am Dan Khan, the Executive Director of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And this is our first um, try at a more European and Asian friendly hour for uh, the telecom user group. Um, so we have a, a meeting document that uh, is on the same calendar invite and I'm just gonna paste the um, URL in uh, the chat window. It is a, um, a Google Doc, uh, so uh, folks in China are gonna need to use a VPN to access it. And then um, I'm aware that we're also having issues with Zoom being blocked by uh, the, the Great Firewall. And so we're gonna need to look at um, if we need to take a different approach for communications going forward. But um, our idea is to have uh, two meetings a month going forward, one that's more convenient for uh, US and Europe and the other one that's more convenient for Europe and China. Um, and so for this group, uh, we are aiming to, the, I guess the current uh, main initiatives of the uh, TUG, the telecom user group, is to um, move the CNF testbed forward. Uh, that is trying to demonstrate real world use cases of um, cloud native network functions. And then we're also looking at a couple uh, white papers around uh, usage of telecoms, uh, uses of CNFs in telecoms. Um, so I'd love to uh, chat through where we stand on those. And then um, maybe, uh, and, and so I would ask if you're on the call to please uh, add in your name under the attendees. And then um, I think I would ask Taylor to kick off and maybe do a review of uh, the CNF testbed. Um, and uh, then we could talk through where we stand with other work. The other uh, big thing that I wanna mention is that we do have a face-to-face -face meeting coming up uh, amazingly in just one more week um, in Antwerp. Uh, we will be there uh, Monday morning, 10.45 a.m. Uh, the day before the Open Networking Summit starts. So I am looking forward to um, getting to uh, see many of you in person and um, to be able to engage directly there. Um, any, so let me go ahead and hand it off to uh, Taylor, I think, to start with, and then we can go through some of the other action items here. Thanks, Dan. Um, I guess I'll not drop a couple of links in here. So let's see. Probably easiest to start with uh, the roadmap, um, which maybe ties in with the review a little bit. I didn't have the review on here. One moment. Right. 
pasting in. One moment. All right. Well, I can't get the the review slide is not coming in. I don't I don't know why, but let's try if right click. Can you slack it to me, Taylor? Yeah, I'm I'm trying to. It's just not pasting the slide. There it is. It finally dropped in. Do not link. All right. So um, and I I can I'll share this in Slack and Zoom. So this is a roadmap with a review slide I just dropped in. Um, okay, and I can share my screen. That's probably easiest. So a lot of the summer, <coughs> excuse me, I have a bit of a cold here. Okay, so um, a lot of the summer on the CNF test bed has been um focused on uh, i guess you could call it some technical debt and getting folk uh, ready for some um, restructuring to pull in new use cases um, and some new i guess technologies uh, what i don't have here um, is maybe an overview beyond what dan has yet so working on that for ons but what I would think of for folks who are not familiar with CNF testbed is it's built to be kind of a technology review tool to help um, folks use and see how emerging uh, technologies for um, cloud native networking and is going to work for the telecom industry um, versus say platforms that are building large reference platforms of specific technologies. We want people to be able to try out um, the different things that are being used on Kubernetes and there's a lot of options. So a lot of the work during the summer was um, focused on supporting different pieces. Um, we have uh, these switches that run in and out of the container. Um, we've been making sure that stuff is working between both the Kubernetes and OpenStack. We did a lot of uh, presentations and gathering feedback on what folks were wanting. And Taylor, and, can I just um, uh, yes. um, interrupt for a second to mention, if folks uh, click on your link and open up the presentation for themselves, every one of these items is a link to the GitHub issue or pull request. And so it, it's yeah. really quite a, a powerful presentation and if, if you wanna go deeper and see additional context on each of these things. But uh, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, no worries, yes. Uh, these, so you'll jump into either a feature or a milestone or pull request that these are tied in. Um, there was a lot of work on getting uh, the step documentation and um, code behind that to a point where the people that haven't been working on it um, can walk in and understand. So those parts that you, when you're working on on anything and you have a lot of assumptions on knowing how it works. So we actually worked with uh, Doshe Telecom to reproduce the test bed. They were um, using some stuff internal and there's some other folks that have also reproduced uh, walking through and uh, following stuff. So we've updated a lot of what was there and then going forward though, what, are, what we're really looking at. So um, on the use cases, um, a lot of that was built around what was available at the time, uh, which is more than a year ago when we uh, got started. How are we gonna support some of the existing technology? It kind of just rolled into being Ansible because there was a lot of pieces that were out of band and not supported in um, whatever the workload platform Kubernetes OpenStack. So we wrapped a lot of that in, in Ansible. On the Kubernetes side, we've been moving towards refactoring a lot of that to be smaller Helm-based pieces that are composable and reusable. And so that's uh, kind of the move, the effort there. 
and we want to support a, a different options still for what can be plugged in. Right now, a lot of the focus is on network service mesh, and you'll see those um, here, like this physical gateway NIC. Um, we have packet filter. There's several NSM use cases that have been um, in progress, and we have a few of those that are working now, and we're building on those. This one will probably uh, be one that's going to be showed at uh, Open Network Summit, um, where you have a Kubernetes cluster and the different connections between the CNFs. Um, cloud native network functions are made with network service mesh, adding additional interfaces and creating the connections between those all the way out to a, a, a CNF that provides some type of access to a physical interface. So if you think you have some containers running that are connected directly inside pods, and then you want outside, rather than using the Kubernetes um, default network interface, we create another one, and this is with NSM doing that. We had other ways of doing this that were out of band, so this is using NSM to um, create those endpoints. Uh, we'll Taylor, be, uh, yeah. just a question. Uh, I think Go ahead. We, we have been looking at uh, the use case with NSM to, to try to have external network connectivity to a layer 3 VPN. Uh, because quite many operators use layer 3 VPNs to separate different sorts of traffic. Uh, is there a yeah. use case here that, that, that corresponds to that one? To a, a VPN connection, um, is that to mm -hmm. other clusters or how, what do you think? Like a, a, a VNF or, or some, some legacy non-cloud native VNF. Uh, yeah, so I don't so think we, you should assume that there is a NSM on the other side. I think that's maybe the difference. No, exactly. So, so the the use case I have in mind is where you have a, a, a DC gateway, where you have a, a virtual router instance, where you terminate uh, a, a layer three VPN, and then you want to connect that uh, virtual router somehow into one of the network service meshes and and some of the ports. Uh, which are, you know, served by the given network service mesh. So it's sort of a, an external connectivity to something that is more like a legacy thing that doesn't have network service mesh in it. So we don't have one um, exactly like what you're talking about. We, um, mm -hmm. well, it's, sorry, when I click here, it kind of messes up. We do have um, some IPsec uh, use cases and what I would mm -hmm. say, what's been happening up until um, now is we've been building a lot, we've been creating a lot of the building block type, very simplistic use cases, so that we could build some more towards what you're talking about. This mm -hmm. physical gateway, Nick, this is a, it's allowing routing traffic on a VLAN to an external system. So we have mm -hmm. in this one where sending traffic to a node that's outside and it's on the same VLAN. Um, mm -hmm. We have these IPsec and those you could have like an IPsec um, termination that goes to some outside IPsec system, say a system that ha has a VNF running um, somewhere else. The other one that we're that's even closer though is what we're targeting in November. And mm -hmm. this is something where it could get modified potentially to do something like what you're talking about. This is the mm -hmm. a Kubernetes and OpenSec use case. And right now we were looking at a GPE tunnel between a OpenStack and Kubernetes cluster. And you would have essentially what you're saying. You're going to have some gateway that's going to terminate or have a con tunnel connection between itself and some endpoint in OpenSec. And then from that, it would send traffic to, that could be whatever type of VNF that you're wanting. Um, mm -hmm. And and then a, a service chain on the Kubernetes side. So we don't have sure. a specific uh, one, but I think we could mm -hmm. add that. And MSM does have VPN um, endpoints 
So we could potentially do exactly what you're saying. Okay, that sounds very interesting. I think I, I'll, I'll just connect one of our guys who is doing a book on this uh, to, to these activities to have a look at what's going on and maybe he can contribute. Yeah, I, I would we, love we, that. We are, very much, we are very much interested. Sorry, go on. Oh, I was just going to ask, could you give us an update? Have you been investigating it or have you made some progress on implementing it so far? Because I know it is one of the core use cases for NSM and um, that uh, Ed or Frederick uh, would be happy to help out if you're running into problems with it. Sure, and, and we've been in constant contact with Frederick and uh, basically we are doing a two-phase proof of concept. The first phase has been completed and the second phase is exactly uh, now we know how the system works and, and, and we are familiar with it. We, we want to create uh, some sort of ability to have external connectivity from the network service mesh through some sort of gateway towards, you know, anything legacy that requires VPNs. Uh, and well, well, we have a tentative plan of, of having some, something that we can demo by the end of the year. So Great. I just wanted to confirm are. that you haven't hit any roadblocks so far. Uh, no, 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 I think uh, it was a, a, a harder, hard, it wasn't an easy start, let's put it like that, but I think uh, we are getting excellent support from Frederick and, and the NSM team. So, uh, yeah, well, let, let, let's see. Obviously, we need to get something working, and then there is always the, the characteristics question that we need to verify. Uh, but I think so far, so good. Okay. Uh, you know, for CNCF, we're hosting uh, network service mesh as a sandbox project. And so we're definitely not trying to say, oh, this is completely mature and uh, ready for production, uh, but uh, that it is hopefully very promising. No, and I think, I think if functionally we can, we can achieve what we want, uh, that we could use network service mesh maybe to uh, sort of, um, let's say, get away from, from the lot of automation that we use infrastructure as a service for. So today for ex external network connectivity, we need to use infrastructure as a service to set up VLANs and, 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 and gateways and whatnot. And if we could move away from that using network service mesh for external connectivity, that would be a, a, a big thing for us actually. Uh, so well, that's, that's, that's our target and we are working on it. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to bring here as well, you know, the news regarding that one. And also, I think uh, we, we should really sync our activities with what's happening with the uh, with the CNF testbed. Yes, for Thomas, thanks. Um, if you'll reach out to me, we can. Uh, what I'd like to do is maybe create a milestone, and and we can start talking about what's needed. We created a spec board as well, so we can mm -hmm. chat if we need to that way, and create a Google Doc and kind of brainstorm on the specifics of the use case and then see how to how we can add those and kind of use this as a, a playground if it would help. Otherwise I'm just happy to talk about how how we've been working at it towards something similar. Yeah, and, and, and we are also working on a description of the, the use case itself, so it's, it's you know, easy to grasp what, what is that what we are trying to achieve. So I think we should definitely sync up offline. Sounds good. All right. Well, I don't want to take up all the time. Um, just real quick to uh, finish here. Um, we're planning on adding some other options. I've kind of added them towards more, more towards the end of the year, although we may get um, some additional help and these could happen sooner. Uh, there's a, a Danm um, demo example set that I thought looked pretty um, good as a possibility to add in. So this is, I'm just going to bring this up. There's not really any tickets here uh, as we come to it. So there's a device plugin um, SRV demo and looking at this as something potentially we could take and have as part of um, something we could use as a use case in CNF test, but um, potentially there's something else that's a better fit, but that one's there. And then thinking we'd also like to see what does it look like as NSM. Um, 
We're also actively working with Intel. Um, we have some people from Intel working in the group and we'll, we've been using different pieces uh, from Intel uh, with what, what we're doing. But one thing that we haven't had uh, since moving to uh, some of the Kubernetes and container-based vSwitch and other things is using Multis um, as, and the CP puller. They have a container experience kit is what they call it, where it's basically a small little reference platform where you can deploy everything at once. And we've tested that on Packet. What we've been asked to do is see what parts would be useful to have as components. And we have an idea of maybe a larger use case using some of those. Uh, before December, we'll probably have some of the pieces in involved. We may even have a NSM with Multis and their, the Intel device plugin in place um, ahead of time. But there's some of the ideas. The Cola OpenStack is something where we'd like to move away from our current Chef-based OpenStack. And if we um, get, I guess, a little bit more help on that, then we'll be shifting over ideally. That seems to be the desired. Uh, but that's a little further out because we need some assistance on that. And, and then end, end end of year towards January, we're going to be working on a, a GSM gateway type use case. We don't really know what exactly that is because we're, if anyone has some feedback on the specific use case they'd like to see with GSM, we do have packet has uh, facilities with 5G uh, Sprint connectivity and we can set up some type of use case with that. So that's a long-term goal. And if so someone's interested or has some specific use cases for mobile connected, then please reach out. And here's how you can do that. Um, we have issues. We also have the CNF testbed Slack channel um, and you can reach out to me as well. I think that's it. I'll hand it back over. I think, um, I don't know if Frederick's here. And I think, uh, I don't know who dropped this in. There is, a, I know there's like two more iterations of, of logos. So we may need to sense this one. I think these are older ones. Um, I think we may need mm -hmm. to, pause on that and get the, the, the logos uploaded, Dan. I think Fred and Alex and, and Cheryl and folks have um, been working on a new sets, but I'll hand this over. Uh, Thomas, do you want to give any more updates on yours next? Yeah, so uh, I, I just thought, thought in, in the white paper there were some very uh, simple, cha simple chapters that has been lying around in, you know, in, in finished state for a while now. So I thought maybe we could uh, give them a kick and approve those simple parts so we can move on and, and you know, proceed with the more complicated chapters. Um, so if you think that's okay, I'm going to just share the document and show which, which parts I'm referring to. But first I need tail, yeah, thank you. Okay, so I should be sharing my screen with you and let me know if you see it. Yep, you are. Yep. Good, so uh, two, two chapters. One is the definition of the CNF and I think this came up in, in one of the comments on the side and was very relevant. So uh, I just sat down together with, with some of my colleagues and then I had a, an online chat with Gergely about this. And it's a, it's a very simple proposition for a CNF, uh, but let me start with, I haven't found any, uh, you know, compact definition for a CNF from anywhere else. So if you're aware of, of this being already defined, then I'm, I'm more than happy to use the existing established definition. 
I, I'm not Tomas, and I, I think the way you're oh. um, uh, defining it makes sense. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, I try to be as simple as possible here. I'm basically saying that it's it's a VNF according to the Etsy specs, but a VNF that fulfills the CNCF cloud native definition, and, and therefore by joining those two definitions into one, I think we build on already accepted uh, quality things. Uh, that was my approach for this. So uh, anyone against uh, this way of defining a CNF or anyone has a better definition? Then I guess we go it for this, It seems like this is a, a, a way to get started and then um, maybe continue to get feedback. It can always be updated. I think so, and, and, and I think we need a more Peter definition because uh, it's it's one thing to, to refer to this high-level definition. It, it's another thing to, to really qualify. Uh, and I remember there were attempts earlier to, to sort of classify CNFs, and I don't think that's completely off the table yet. So I think we need to go in that direction and, and qualify this, what a CNF is and what a good CNF. Uh, but for a start, at least we know what we are talking about. Uh, also, I proposed uh, a target audience for the white paper, which is basically uh, technically minded individuals, architects, influencers, and decision makers, both in the service provider telecom operator world, but also in, in the vendor community. Uh, and these, these people are first and foremost interested in engineering and architecture aspects of cloud native and telecom together. Uh, so this primary audience has an interest in developing and evaluating CNFs, uh, both from the, the vendor perspective, uh, driving the development and architecture evolution of the CNFs, uh, but also uh, driving a modernization of a network. So from the service provider's perspective, uh, getting these onboarded and, and getting into operator networks to generate value and money. Uh, then, going on, this primary audience uh, is, is in charge of, of implementing and evolving a distributed cloud infrastructure uh, in the context of the telecommunications industry. And, and this is important to, to, to signify that there are people who, who build clouds for these workloads. And, and, and this is also a group who should be interested in the things that we are writing down here so that they can build the right cloud infrastructure for cloud native applications. Uh, then, of course, there are those who build these as operators and there are those vendors who build cloud infrastructure and sell it uh, to, to service providers uh, or provide it as a service. And then finally, uh, the target audience is interested in the overall success of cloud native transformation of, of, of telecom. Uh, and this, this includes uh, you know, obtaining the right KPIs uh, when it comes to characteristics, time to market, cost of ownership, cost of investment, uh, regulatory and quality requirements. They are in, interested in ensuring a future compatible end-to-end -end architecture that uh, doesn't go out of fashion next year and establishing and maintaining a strategy for handling legacy solutions. So uh, whatever we do here for cloud native needs to interwork with the existing legacy in most cases. Uh, so maybe a little bit more fluffy than the CNF definition, but I thought uh, at least this was the target audience I had in mind. And I, of course, I very much welcome any comments or any alternative suggestions here. Or if everyone's happy, we just approve this now. Um, and uh, review. Yeah, thank you. So uh, I will change these to, I don't even know because I haven't thought about it. What do we do with parts which are approved? But I guess we'll indicate that somehow. Um, is Gergay online? Uh, have you had uh, any any conclusions with Peter regarding uh, the Etsy and FB Mono chapter? No, I got no answer from him on Slack. Uh, so let's let's not 
close it yet, but if you have any comments, and of course I, I'm ready to discuss and I ask him in mail if uh, he wants to add anything else. But from my perspective, this is uh, done. Sure, so I, I, I can also ask him in person tomorrow because we meet tomorrow whether he thinks oh. this is done Please and then, so. then I <laughs> yeah. guess then we could, we, could, we could make this ready and maybe have an approval on the face-to-face -face meeting next week. Yeah. Sounds excellent. Uh, I also saw you added a new <laughs> chapter on, uh, actually quite some others have added chapters here, but I saw this chapter with similarities and differences compared to the other cloud native applications. For example, enterprise and web, and I just read it and I added one suggestion. So I think we can still keep this work in progress for a while. Uh, okay. For the next coming weeks. Uh, so, that was everything from me with regards to one, the white sorry, paper. One, one question: Do we have Rabi and or uh, Shuk Dev in the in the meeting? Because I think the two chapters which are here with uh, VIP, they are about the same thing. So I believe that both of them are are try to cover CNTT. Yeah, it kind of looks like that. So either either Rabi or Shuk Dev, are you online? No, so I guess we'll, we'll handle this offline via comments and maybe maybe Robbie will join uh, for, for the face-to-face. -face. Um, we, we probably need to work these out because, as, as you say, it, these chapters seems to be pointing at the same direction. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Robbie okay. will be in town, that I know. I don't know if he will join on Monday. Okay, uh, well, we'll see, but I, 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 I think we can discuss also this offline. Mm. Rather okay. uh, right. Also, I have Henrik here with me in the same room, and, and he has a suggestion uh, for, for the white paper. Yeah, so that was um, just to maybe establish one view on how we look at the you know, Kubernetes namespaces and how we would like to uh, look at that when it comes to uh, our typical CNFs. Uh, so a little bit... Uh, yeah, add a chapter on that uh, and how, uh, for what reason we want to use it um, in such a way. So um, I think there was uh, maybe just one one liner there before. Um, so maybe you know the idea that I maybe start to add a little bit here, and then of course people can, um, I mean, more than happy to have others helping out and defining uh, this chapter as well. Um, but I guess I can start to a little bit write the, the, the general idea how we see it and, and why we want to establish this, of course, that, you know, if we have a common view of how we would address uh, namespaces, then, of course, when we deploy our, our CNFs, it becomes easier to handle them in the same way. Okay, for me. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other feedback from the community, or any other thing that you would like to bring up with regards to the white paper? All right. So it seems like that's it. Uh, obviously, we'll keep adding content and, and yeah. Uh, uh, try to bring the already existing parts into the approved state. And, and I know I have certain items on my backlog that I wanted to contribute to this, so I will get on to that. Uh, so maybe we could so, uh, take a moment, mm -hmm. and uh, because we did set this up to be an Asian-friendly time, I believe we have some folks on the call now from uh, Huawei and uh, uh, Samsung, um, I'm not sure if we have anyone from Japan and if they could um, uh, introduce themselves and uh, ask any questions or say if they would like to get involved, um, we would encourage that. Uh, would anyone from Asia like to, uh, who's perhaps new to, from the call, I think we have uh, someone from CMCC and some people from Korea. 
you just need to hit unmute in Zoom before you can speak. And uh, Tomas, you might want to stop sharing uh, unless I yeah, cut you I, off. I, I'm fighting with the controls. I might need to, to disconnect for a second. Okay. Uh, it's okay if you don't want to speak up. Um, another option, if you're having problems with your audio connections, is that you're welcome to just type in a message into the chat. But uh, we would like to welcome um, our colleagues from Asia. We are very uh, happy to have you involved in this working group or a user group, but technically. And I, I guess I, oh, there we go. Oh, hi, Dan. Uh, hi, folks. Uh, my name is uh, Jian Xiang. And um, I, I used to, I used to, um, uh, so currently I'm active it. Yeah, I'm quite, uh, uh, so currently I got involved in the uh, network service mesh group. And uh, so I've been focusing on that. So from that, and also like I joined the uh, CNCF conference, uh, Shanghai, it, just a couple of months ago. And during that conference, I met uh, Thomas and uh, with, uh, Nicola and also Taylor. So, and then I found uh, somehow interested in trying to find the uh, user case of not only NSM, but also trying to find, uh, like say, try to solve uh, this uh, telecom uh, e uh, scenarios uh, using in cloud native, um, I mean, idea or concepts. So this is actually my very first uh, meeting, joining this uh, uh, telecom user group. So I'm um, excited about that and looking forward to more discussions and uh, uh, ideas sharing. Thank you, guys. Great, and sorry, which company are you with? Uh, currently, I work for Huawei. Great, well, uh, thank you very much for joining. Oh, thank you, Zia, thanks. And um, would anyone else from Asia like to speak up? Uh, for, we have, I think, several folks from Korea. Hello. Hello. Uh, I am from. I am Won Sok Sung from the Samsung. Yes. Thank you very much for joining. You're uh, from Samsung you. Electronics in Seoul. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for the moving time to from the to the uh, the Asian Asian time. Uh, great. So I did want to confirm: is this time better? I appreciate that it's still um, in, in your evening and not in the middle of the day. Yeah, see, it's it's very it it's a good it's good time to us. Great. Well, thank you for accommodating it. Yeah. So still, I'm I'm not familiar with this that uh, working group. So I I'm going to be the more accustomed to this this that this group. Um. Great. Um. Okay, well, uh, that, that's, that's excellent. Uh, so uh, welcome and uh, thanks very much for joining. Um, anyone else like to introduce themselves? Yeah, this is Patrick Rokita. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm the first time on this call with my colleague, Mohamed El Gamal. Uh, we are both from uh, NetNumber, uh, which is a US company, East Coast. Uh, Mohamed and I, we are, we are located in Europe. So it's a pleasure to us to meet this uh, telco group and participate in evolving the CNCF aspects uh, for telecommunication related deployments. We are at our company uh, transitioning from yeah, VNF to CNF. So this is very helpful to us. And of course Great. the time is excellent for us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, well, I think our last agenda item was the for Henrik. Um, did Henrik, were you able to cover the namespaces already or, or did you have more to talk about? Uh, no, I think that was just the introduction. So, I mean, I will start to to add, and and then of course um, hope that people will start to to comment or or join in defining that. So, I think I covered what I wanted to just okay, say in this thank first. Thing. You. Uh, would anyone else? Well, well, uh, well, please go ahead. Yeah, just just one thing from Tomasz. Uh, I I I know I had a, a, a discussion on Slack about the license. Uh, that we should be releasing this document under, and my understanding was that it's Creative Commons, right? Yes, thanks for asking. Uh, we want to do CC BY 4.0. Uh, okay. Uh, but it, uh, just to be clear, the, the BY is just to give credit to the, the telecom user group, but it, it, it's, it's explicitly allowed for commercial use or, or other kinds of reuse. Do, do you maybe have some sort of a template blurb or text that can be just pasted into the white paper so that it's clear yes. for everyone it, who is contributing? Yeah. The easiest I think, thing I think from you can just um, say, see, you just link to this page. You just say mm -hmm. CC by and link there. And, um, but it, it's just, it's a very well-known license as, as you had mentioned. And so yeah, um, I, it, it does allow you to use it for almost anything. Okay, but then I'll add this to the white paper because I think it's for some of us, it's, it's important because, um, because of legal reasons, it makes it much easier to contribute to this document than if it were under some other license. Oh, I totally agree. Good, thank you. That was all from me. Yeah, and it's actually one of the nice things about CNCF that all of the projects that we host are required to be licensed under Apache uh, 2.0 and all of the documentation or uh, other kinds of materials that we host um, need to be under uh, under CC BY. And then I'll, I'll just mention that my favorite example of that is, uh, I got that URL wrong, um, FIPI. If you uh, if you click through that link, you can see an example of some of our um, some of our CC BY material, and um, we could at some point once we've worked all this stuff out, create a nice uh, children's book about Fippy tries to listen to some music or something, and explain or Fippy tries to make a telephone call how uh, how the CNFs are involved. Um, okay, well, if there's not any other um, new business today, one, uh, I, I would yeah. one oh, other, Yeah, one other question that I got from one of my colleagues is the location of the recorded meetings. Do you have a... Well, yeah, and, um, normally they're posted to the YouTube, um, the CNCF YouTube channel, and you can, uh, that's the link, but you can also just go to cncf.io. Um, and look under newsroom menu, but um, unfortunately, uh, we don't ha didn't have the permissions set up correctly today, and so we weren't able to record uh, this meeting. So this meeting is going to disappear into the ether, but we will have it fixed for the future. Thank you. Okay, and Gergli, could you give? Um, are you going to have some resources to focus on? Danim in the um, CNF testbed this fall, or is that still up in the air? No, yes, uh, I will have, and uh, I will have one of the guys uh, in in Antwerp, and I plan to have some meetings with meetings with Taylor to kickstart the the work. Well, I'm excited to hear that. So um, I, I would love to join those meetings if I could, but I won't pull okay. you down otherwise. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. But, but that, that's great news. Yeah. Okay. I will. Well, uh, I will. Uh, I will keep uh, Taylor updated on on Slack if I have the, the sometimes suggestions and stuff like that. Great. Well, uh, let me just confirm that the next phone call for this time is going to be October twenty first. Um, 
And um, then for the other time for the telecom user group is uh, October 7th. And that's at the, um, the, the more West Coast friendly time. So we're gonna keep holding two of these every month. Um, but I, and then uh, I certainly hope that many of you will be able to make the trip to San Diego for KubeCon Cloud Native Con. Uh, we have just published the schedule now. Um, and um, I'm pleased to report that our friends from um, uh, Linux Foundation Networking are going to be doing a, a keynote uh, there on a, a live demonstration of a 5G um, network uh, on the keynote stage uh, using CNFs. So um, I, I think that that's, uh, among other things, is going to get a lot of attention for this space. Um, well, so we'll stop there unless uh, there's any other comments. Okay, thank you all very much for the time today and um, hope to see many of you in Antwerp. Safe travels. Thank you, see you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.